As you well know, people, welcome to the platform. 323, Black Caps, first loss of the T20 World Cup last night. When you look at the score, uh, England 179, I think it was for five or six, and we got 159. Uh, probably looks as though I was a little bit more comfortable than it was because it was and it got quite stressful and tense towards the end there. Mitchell Santner, Black Cap, joins us. I presume you're still in Brisbane. Welcome to the program, Mitch. Yeah, we're still here. We, uh, we got a late flight to Adelaide, so we're just chilling. Can I tell you that the weather forecast for Friday is bang on, man. It is fine, fine and fine. Well, that's what I want to hear because the rain out wouldn't do us any good. No, and we're trying to... I mean, look, we've had all the calculators out and we've tried to figure out this <laughs> net, net... I could hear you laughing, net run rate thing. Are you guys even thinking about that or are you just thinking about going and winning? Yeah, I guess for us, the first thing is, is to win. Um, there was obviously talk about it last night against England, but it was the same. We just wanted to win that game because we knew if we win, we're, we're pretty much in the semi. So um, we just go to Adelaide and, and try to beat a pretty good Irish team. Look, uh, they got off to a bit of a, a tear last night, didn't they? Uh, stepping back from the crease, having a real go in that power play till you came on and slowed it down. Were you expecting them to be as aggressive as that? Uh, yeah, we, we obviously know Joss and, and Alex are pretty aggressive up top. And, um, you know, we've seen throughout the tournament that the power play has been pretty key. So, um, yeah, they obviously pretty good players and um, they obviously got off to a pretty good start. So um, I thought we did pretty well to, to pull it back there through the middle. Um, and they obviously got away a little bit at the end, but, you know, it was, it was still a pretty good wicket, so we, we, we thought we were kind of in with a shot still at halfway. Yeah, and look, and when it came to the batting, I mean, it wasn't, as I said, to start with that far away, was it? Nah, we were close. We were close. We obviously um, were probably a little bit slow in our power play, and then, um, you know, obviously, Glenn played some pretty good shots, and, and that partnership with Kane was, was pretty good, and we, we got to a pretty good position. I think it was kind of 50-50 there for, for a while in the last five overs, but... Um, I think there was a couple of overs there from, from Wokes and Sam Curran that kind of, you know, got the rate out to about 16, 17, which is, which is pretty tough. Look, you know, and I've got to admit here, I've been, you know, a little outspoken and a little over the top at times. I've wondered what the heck you're doing when you're bowling, mate. But I'll tell you what last night was, can I say, absolutely genius. I thought your flight, I thought the change of pace, I thought the subtlety was just perfect there. Yeah, and Kane introduced you at the right time. Yeah, it's obviously always a challenge when you when you come in the power play, but um, obviously those two guys like pace on the ball, so I guess that was the theory to try change it up and slow it up a little bit. And I guess for me, when there's you know there's a shorter side, um, it kind of makes the bowling a little bit more. I guess the plans a little bit easier. Um, obviously, try keep it off and take it wide. It was the same at same at Sydney with that short square boundary. You try kind of take it off and bowl a bit wider and, and make them hit to the hit to the shorter side. Mitchell Sandler with us. So just explain to the listeners then. So in terms of the short side, how shorter is that short side? Yeah, I guess the end I was bowling from outside the power play. The, the mid-arm was a very short hit. Um, and obviously it was a little bit bigger square, but um, I knew that they were kind of trying to target that area as, as I would if I was batting. Um, so I guess for me, it was trying to, you know, take it off and bowl a little bit wider, try to get hit out to the bigger side. And if they wanted to try, fetch one across the line, um, hopefully, you know, one would go straight up. Well, that was the perfect one to Hales, wasn't it? And you could see what he was trying to do. He was almost like a crab the way he was trying to hit it. And you pitched it absolutely perfectly to get him to come wildly swing. It was almost like a baseball strike at it. <laughs> yeah, I guess he's, he, he, um, he obviously thought after, if, after he nicked that one, I might go a little bit fuller. Uh, but yeah, I guess, I guess it's trying to, like you said, trying to change the pace, keep them guessing a little bit. I think, you know, they're so good at, being one pace hitters, those guys, if you just kind of bowl in the same spot at the same speed, they'll try to, you know, they'll get after you. And you know, I thought each bowl extremely well from the other end as well. Yeah, he did. And look, <clears throat> the confidence from both of you guys, it was, it was fantastic to see last night. Because, you know, I'd, 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 I mean, I sit there and I, and, I, and I watch you and I think, I mean, you're on a hiding to nothing, you slow bowlers, in this form of the game. Everything revolves around the batsman hitting home runs, doesn't it? I mean, how do you approach the games? Is there any fear or kind of trepidation? Because every ball, they're trying to smack you out of the park. No, it definitely feels like that when you're bowling. <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess last night there was it was on the slightly slower side, um, so you know it kind of gives us a bit more confidence in that if you kind of land it there, it can do something. Um, I guess when it's flat, you you got to work out other ways to you know try to get hit for ones and um, and stuff like that. So I guess last night, you know, if you kind of bowled on a good length with a little bit of stop, um, it was it was it was handy. So. Um, I thought we adapted pretty well to the surface, and mm. um, but then knowing you know we can get on some pretty flat ones over here, and it might be just trying to get hit for ones, and then try and make a mistake with a big shot.
Mitchell Sandin with us. So just the science and the, and the thought processes that goes in. I mean, obviously every pitch is different and every state of the game is kind of different. But do you go out there thinking, OK, I don't want to concede any more than this and over? Do those figures come into your mind? Uh, not so much, I guess. It, it depends on the role um, and uh, and the situation, I guess. Yeah, you know, if there is a bit there, you can be um, a little bit more aggressive. You might get hit for the odd boundary, but I guess the role for us through the middle is to still try to take wickets. Um, I guess that, that kind of can be in different stages. It can be in different ways. Um, you know, where it's really flat, you might be trying to just get hit for one, then the batsmen know they have to hit a big shot and kind of get caught in the boundary, whereas if there is a bit of spin, you might be a bit more fuller, uh, a bit slower, try to be a bit more attacking, but I think you just have to weigh it up out there and um, obviously all the scouting that goes involved and, and the stats on each wicket all, all plays a part. Now, when it was skied, Kane goes running, it's over his shoulder, so it's coming over his shoulder, you can hardly, I mean, it's one of those baseball catches, it's, it's bloody hard to kind of, to figure out and to get the, you know, exact, right, sort of, over, am I, can, can I catch this? And when he caught it, you didn't react at all. Did you know it was a catch or did you think it was a catch? Well, we, we obviously think Kane's a pretty trustworthy guy, so we obviously thought it was out if he was claiming it, but <laughs> it was one of those ones that kind of bobbled, and um, it would have been nice, obviously, in the stage of the game, getting Joss out early. Um, and he obviously went on and <laughs> made a few more runs. Yeah, look, and I hate to tell you this, mate, but, I mean, there's been some real clickbait headlines both here and in the Tasman about this. I mean, Kane Williamson, we know, is one of the nicest blokes that's ever picked up a cricket bat, but not only that, you could tell... You know, it was only that last angle that you saw it. Oh, I did hit the ground. But the way that he dived and everything, I could actually sort of almost feel like the way he came up clutching it was like, oh, I got it, I got it. He was almost surprised. So it wasn't like any deliberate, oh, I'm trying to cover any butt here or anything like that. It was pretty genuine. Yeah, no, I think so. I mean, he, he kind of, once he hit the ground, it, it kind of felt like he still had it on his chest. So he obviously thought, you know, he must have just kind of been out and didn't hit the ground. But obviously, like you said, the, the angle showed that it did. But yeah, I, Kane's not one of those guys that try try trick the system, especially when there's cameras involved. Well, that's right. And also, what he's you know his little gesture there to Joss as he came back in, I thought was no. I mean, that's yeah. what I expect from a gentleman and a captain as well. I just, hey, bro, sorry about that. I'm all, you know, on we go. Yeah, that's exactly right. He apologised straight away because he generally thought you know he caught it, um, and but that's that's all part of it. And we had to move on pretty quick. And um, yeah, I think we whenever you I guess you drop Joss twice, it's it's not a great. Not a great result for us. And also our fielding, uh, you know, I mean, we've been so sharp and everything else. I mean, the drop catches, the old catches win matches. I mean, we saw Sri Lanka were awful in the field against us. Glenn's had a couple of nice breaks, hasn't he, in the, early in his innings? Yeah, yeah, that one, uh, the one last night was a bit of a surprise. Um, but yeah, obviously Glenn's made 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 the guys pay and, um, for, for dropping him, and he's 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 an outstanding talent with the bat, as we've seen. Um, you know, I guess no matter the situation, he, he just kind of goes out and plays his game and mm. can generate that strike rate, which is, um, you look at, I guess, the partnership that him and Kane had last night was, you know, put us in a pretty good position. I know, obviously, Kane probably didn't get as well as, you know, as many away as he would have liked, but I thought they bowled pretty well at him. And then if you look at the partnership in a whole, you know, it was a pretty good partnership. Okay, so how does it feel <clears throat> this year compared to last in terms of where you're at in the tournament, if I if I'd asked you before the tournament and said, okay, with one game to play against Ireland, um, destiny is at our own hands. Forget the run rate or anything else. Win that game, we go through. You would take that every day, right? Yeah, one hundred percent. It's obviously been, you know, the highs of the first game. Um, you know, beating Aussie in front of a, a packed crowd, and then you know the realization of look like you, any team can win a game on on a day, so we have to still roll up and perform. I think it was a bit of a reality check the, the game against Sri Lanka at the start. Um, we obviously lost a few wickets, but then no one panicked and, you know, we still got off over the line. So, you know, the lads are in a pretty good spot. And like you said, you'd, you'd probably take that at the start, yeah. knowing that you had to beat Ireland to make the semis. Yeah, um, obviously with the caveat on that is they did beat England in the rained out game and, and so forth. And we're sitting there now with Australia, as I said, right at the start, getting all the calculators out and everything else. Uh, you know, England against Sri Lanka is still a tricky one for them as well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we've seen, um, obviously, how good Sri Lanka are. They, you know, winning the Asia Cup and, and then Afghanistan on, you know, on on a slowish wicket that can beat anyone. So, um, you know, and, yeah, we knew that going in, that obviously anyone can beat anyone, and as we've seen in the qualifiers and throughout this World Cup. Um, so we obviously aren't going to focus on those other games. We obviously just got to focus on, on beating Ireland, and, um, but we've seen they're, they're a very good side, so we have to be, you know, all guns blazing. At the start of the tournament, 
the goal is always to win it, but what is the minimum goal? Is it to make the semi-finals? Yeah, I guess the first step is to, to make the semis and then um, you obviously see who you're going to play and, and go from there. Um, you know, I guess we're always not really expected to make the semis and, and stuff like this. So, well, we um, probably are now, though. Mate. I mean, to be fair to you, you well, probably yeah, are now. Because we, we always think that underdog um, thing and we never really pumped up for the tournament, but we don't mind that. You know, we go and we know we've got a good side and, and playing some pretty good cricket, so... We have to fly under the radar and, and then make the semis and go, oh, New Zealand there again. Yeah, see, I mean, and you know, if you go back through the last four or five world tournaments, that's always been the case. And I, I'm more than happy if the rest of the cricket world says, oh, what about those guys? Oh, you don't worry about them down there. You're great. Don't worry about us down here. That's fine. We're absolutely fine <laughs> with that. Are you looking at the other side? Have you watched any of those games, India, South Africa, so forth? Yeah, obviously, you know, with the games on every day, you, you kind of have a look at and see what's on. And, um, you know, South Africa look like a, a very good team at the moment, and so do India. So, we're obviously not looking, obviously, too far ahead into the semi-finals. We obviously want to do what we need to do first, and, and then play on, and then see see from there. Um, so obviously, a few days from the semi, uh, from our last game to the semi. So you know, a few days to, to scout and, and get ready for a semi if if we're there. Um, final question, and thank you so much for your time, Mitchell Santner, with us. Is is does it feel like you're almost playing in three or four different countries? You go down to Melbourne, you're in monsoon weather. You go to Perth, it's hot and dry. You know what I mean? You go to Brisbane, it's sweltering. You go down to Adelaide, I don't know what to expect down there. Yeah, it's definitely definitely different. Because obviously last year we, we were in a bubble and you you kind of on a bus to the to a ground and back to the hotel, so um, a bit more freedom. And you know, it, it's been quite full on. I guess you're flying and then you have one day to train and the next day you're playing. So um, it does feel like we're in a few different countries, obviously. I've been to Melbourne a few times and I've never seen it rain once, but it wow. seems like it rained every day that we've been there. Yeah, it's just torrential, isn't it? It just never stopped. <laughs> it generally didn't stop. We went out, that outfield was seriously wet as well. Uh, felt like it was a swimming pool, but um, yeah, it's, it's obviously un- unfortunate when you have double hitters and you get obviously two games right mm. now, but you know, it's out of out of anyone's hands and um, obviously we just you got to move on and take your at your draw and go to the next game. All right. Well, congratulations on what you've achieved so far. One game to go then and a win against Ireland. Let's cross our fingers and uh, play well in that game in Adelaide and we'll see what happens after that. And again, you know, I love uh, words being stuffed down my neck, mate, and being able to sort of sit there and eat a bit of humble pie. You were magnificent last night and I want to say that <laughs> out loud. You were, you were you were brilliant last night. Keep bowling like that. I'll try to. <laughs> yeah, go on. Thank you so much for your time, mate. Very generous of you. Thank you. No worries. Thanks, Good on mate. you. Mitchell Sander with us.